Randy, if we're saying anything stupid, you gotta tell us. We're here in Sedona, Arizona for the Pink Bike Field Trip. We're gonna focus in our attention on value-priced bikes. Now, if you wanna get your dollars to go a little bit further, get more bang for your buck, the best route there is to go used. Buying a used bike can be risky though. Sometimes you're buying it sight unseen, sometimes you get to go look at it first. In that case, you need to know what to look for. Make sure there's no cracks in the frame, make sure the fork isn't worn out, all that kind of stuff, before you go ahead and trade your PlayStation or whatever it is for your used bike. Let's go inside, have a look. Okay, so we've got a used Trek Fuel EX7 here. It's going for $1,800. New, it was $2,900. So you're getting a lot of bike for that money. But, Casimir, what should I look for before I trade a bunch of money in my PlayStation for this thing? Yeah, well, if you're able to get the bike in front of you, that's the best way. Otherwise, you're gonna have the person you're buying it from send you as many pictures as possible. We're still gonna cover the same things though. So basically, the frame is an important thing to check out the drivetrain, the suspension, and the brakes. Yep. Those are the big parts. You know, the little things, the tires, the seat, the grips, those are important, but they're easily replaceable. If you need to replace a fork or a frame, something like that, that's gonna be a big hit. For sure. So let's start with the frame, Casimir. What am I looking for and where am I looking? Basically, full suspension frame or hardtail, you wanna check for cracks. And those are gonna be in the key places, the head tube, seat stays, chain stays, anywhere there's a weld, or mm -hmm. if somehow you've got some money for a carbon frame, a seam, that type of thing. So checking for cracks, Again, a bike shop can help you out with that. A lot of times they'll do sort of a safety check. You can roll the whole bike in, mm -hmm. 25 to $50, depending on the shop. They'll give it a good check over, give you a little extra peace of mind. It's way better than your head tube coming off your used bike on your first ride, right? Exactly. For sure. And if it's a full suspension bike, you're also gonna wanna check the pivots, uh, yep. whether they're bearings or bushings, just see if there's any play, give a little wiggle, you pick the back end up, kind of drop it, feel if there's any clunks, that mm -hmm. type of thing. I mean, a bearing change, you get a shop to do a bearing change, could be hundreds of dollars, yeah, exactly. right? So on the front of the bike, front suspension, one thing you wanna look for is the bushing play. So you grab the front brake. It's a lot like what you would do when you check your headset, except you're putting your hand down here, half your hand on the fork lowers and half your hand on the stanchion tube and rock it back and forth. If you can feel play here, it might mean that the bushings are worn out and that is a very expensive fix. Yeah. And along with the fork and the shock, you just give it a good squish, you know, have them like you set it up for your weight, squish it up and down. It feels like it's full of sand and molasses. Yep. Probably time for service. It's worth asking them too when the last time they serviced it. Some people have never serviced their fork and they've had it for years and years. So yeah. That's yeah. something to check out. When you push down on the shock, you want it to be quiet. You don't want to hear whoosh, whoosh, yeah, the sound that's yeah. air in there. It might need a rebuild. You want to make sure that there's no free play at the top. Suspension is expensive. So make sure it's good to go. Yep. What's then, next? Let's go to the drivetrain. That's another thing where it can be expensive. If they've totally worn it out, never replaced a chain, just rode it to the ground, that can cost a lot of money to fix it up. So again, you wanna check that chain, check it for stretch. Hopefully you can take a little test ride to shift through all the gears to see if it's skipping, it feels like it's clunking, if it mm -hmm. shifts into spokes right away. That's something you have to take care of. Especially modern one by drivetrains, yeah. expensive. Some of those cassettes are very pricey. So you wanna make sure that they're not worn out. Uh, a new chain isn't the end of the world, but a new derailleur yeah, costs a lot. Costs a lot of money. Final part's probably gonna be those brakes. Pick the wheels up, give them a spin, see how those rotors look, check the pads. And the pads are an easy thing to replace. And even the rotors aren't that expensive, but just worth knowing what you're getting into. Um, you know, give the levers a squeeze, see if they feel like they're just going to the bar or if they mm -hmm. feel firm. Again, those are easier fixes than something like a whole drivetrain, but it's gonna be money that you're gonna have to pay and you wanna know what you're getting into. Probably the final thing you wanna check that dropper post, a lot of new bikes are gonna come with a dropper post. Hopefully the bike that you're planning on buying has a dropper post. Just move it up and down, make sure it's not sagging when you sit on it. Yeah. You know, check the lever, see if it feels like it's operating smoothly. It's a little thing, but again, you wanna get that bike and just be able to head out don't, and ride. Casimir, don't be silly. A well-used dropper post possibly giving you trouble? <laughs> Never happens. Never happens, <laughs> Never. So that's the basics of what you should look for on any used bike. But now let's take a little closer look at this one sitting in front of us. Like we said, it's priced at $1,800. Uh, we looked at a bunch of bikes recently, brand new for $2,000. What else do you get for going used? Well, the big thing here is suspension for me. You're getting a better fork on the front. 
This is the same fork. It's a RockShox 35. It's the same fork that comes on some $3,000 bikes. Yeah, a lot of the bikes we had under $2,000 that get an, ended up with that RockShox Recon fork. Yep. So this is kind of like the next step up. So nice to see that there. Yeah, this is definitely a better performing fork than that. It's also more adjustable. And now back, you're getting a shock with a pedal assist lever with multiple positions. And that's actually not all that common, we found out on yep. bikes, new bikes that cost right around 1800 bucks, yeah, $2,000 or so. Yep, and on the drivetrain of this one, this is 12-speed drivetrain, which we're finding across the board these days. But this is the NX, which is one step up from the SX drivetrains we're finding at most new bikes in this price point. So again, everything's kind of bumped up one level when you go used. Yeah, the brakes, again, brakes are definitely a couple levels up. And then if you look at the bike, you could see some of the touch points are nicer. It's because it comes with a nicer cockpit, a little nicer seat, things like that. Yep. They're small, but that kind of stuff adds up. You know, yeah. this is a bike that you're going to have for a couple of years, probably. So you might as well get the nice stuff. Exactly. In the case of this one, because you would be buying it from a shop, used from a shop, they should have records of how much it's been used. You know, it's a demo bike, so they can let you know, oh, this went out on 40 different rides or went out on 20 rides. You get an idea of how hard of a life this bike has had so far. All right, we took a look at that Trek Fuel EX7. Now we're gonna take a look at this Intense Primer. This one costs a little bit more. It's going for right around $3,000, give or take. That is one thing to mention. Sometimes a little bit of wiggle room with the price of these bikes. Not quite as set in stone as it would be with a brand new bike, but this bike, 3,000, maybe a little below. Mm -hmm. What are we getting for that price? You're getting a much better frame. So the Trek was aluminum and this is carbon. So the frame is gonna be lighter. Uh, the other big thing here is the suspension. You got a Fox 34 in the front with a grip damper. Uh, you have a DPX2 on the back. Um, yeah, so much more capable suspension. Yep, that's the main part. You still get the same drivetrain, but you know that frame and suspension, that would add a lot to this bike. Retail, like you're saving around $800 to $900 on this, so you can get a good deal going used. Those are the basics of buying a used bike. I think we've seen here, you can get a lot of bang for your buck as long as you're buying it from a trusted source, whether that's from a bike shop or if you're using the PB buy and sell, and make sure you get as many pictures as possible, good communication. Just take your time, don't rush into things, don't give your money away without you know, making sure you know what you're doing. But if you're on a budget, a used bike is definitely something to consider. Happy hunting. Happy hunting.